Hey, hey. How's everybody doing? Sorry, I had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties this morning. Still keeping it happy though. Doesn't matter. It's what's going on up here. Everything else we forgive and we don't worry about it. Right? So one of the technical challenges I was having is I also wanted to set it up because today what I want to do with you guys or with everyone, with you my friend, um, is I want to go over one of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned in terms of how it all comes together what what are the thoughts in your mind and how do they come together in order to create either the happiness or the joy the state of mind that you're in everyone first of all if you're joining me please say hello drop a comment in the uh in the comment section say hello let me know you're here hi anna how you doing my apologies, everyone, for being a little bit late on. And like I said, I had a little bit of technical difficulty. My camera, for some reason, wouldn't work. Hopefully, you guys hear everything okay. I had to go and get my flip chart because I'm going to do a little bit of explaining today, right? For those of you who didn't get a chance to um, get the implementation guide, I highly recommend getting the implementation guide because there you will have diagrams for what I'm going to take you through today. And the reason why it's a big one for me, I'm so excited to share this with you, is because this made the biggest difference in my life. Um, in the sense that from all the lessons that I've been blessed to learn, um, this one made the biggest difference because it gave me clarity. It identified certain things about the mind. Um, for many of you, I'll give you an example since there's not, since I can't really speak to you live but you can only drop uh, comments in if i give you an example of how the mind operates it's in pictures right so if i ask you what color is your fridge it's not necessarily a white or black or stainless steel fridge that pops up in your mind it's the image of the fridge that pops up i hope that's clear uh if i ask you what color is your car you do not see the color, you see an image of your car. If I ask you, what does your favorite suit or dress look like? You see an image for the dress or the suit. And then you identify what it looks like. I hope that's clear. For those of you who are here live, please drop a comment, say yes or no. Let me know if you guys are, you know, if any of this is moving too fast, if I'm not explaining it correctly, please, please let me know. Um, for those of you who are watching the recording, by all means, drop your comments. I'm always excited to see what they are. I always respond to them. If you have any questions, if you want more clarification, I'll be happy to do that. As well, remember, save all your questions for Friday where I'll be doing a live Q&A as well. So any questions that come up, you're welcome to shoot them my way. Um, you can message me. You can uh, email me. I'll include my email in this video. And uh, you can just send me some of the questions that you want to cover on Friday. Um, so basically the idea why I want to explain the mind is because once we understand how the mind works and how our thoughts dictate what's going on throughout our day in terms of actions, in terms of what we're going to do, how we're going to go about our day, what, what, you know, what circumstances are going to... Uh, create our thinking and how we're going to respond to what's happening. The idea is the successful people, uh, well, again, what is success? <laughs> success is happily moving progressively day by day towards your worthy ideal, towards what you want. Remember I said that success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal, progressively moving in a happy state towards your ideal so in order for you to be in a happy state in order for you to be able hi maya how you doing uh in order for you to be able to control and set your intentions for the day you need to understand how your mind operates i mean it's your only tool for everything while you're here in this physical world i'll give you an example we exist on three different planes at the same time we're spiritual beings we live in a physical body connected to the physical world 
and we connect by the two with our intellect, which is our mind. So at any given time, you are physical, you are spirit, not spiritual, you are spirit. And then you have an intellect, you have a mind. That mind is in control every single cell in your body. So imagine that. Imagine if your happiness and joy, which resides as a feeling inside of you, stems from what's going on in this physical world and physical body, and yet all of it is a, is a, um, a manifestation of what's happening in your mind. I keep pointing to here, this is, the, this is not mind. That's why I want to get into this lesson today. When I keep pointing like this, I'm pointing at my head. Inside this is a brain. The brain is not the mind. Remember I told you about the fridge, the car, and the suit? Well, if I ask you what does your mind look like, I know for me my answer was the brain right away. I mean, it's the brain. What else could it be? And then I was explained by my mentor Bob who said, no, no, no. Your brain is simply a physical thing and it's a switching station for your body. It controls every cell in your body to activate your arms to move, your mouth to move. You know, it, 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 it connects your sensors like your sight, your hearing, your smell and all that and touch. Connects it to what's going on. But all of it is controlled by the mind. And because no one's ever seen the mind, because the mind is not a physical thing, it's actually an energy like everything else that's universal. So everything is energy. The body is energy. The, the desk I'm sitting behind is energy. The chair I'm in is energy. This flip chart is energy. All of it is a different form of vibration of energy. And we talked about that in day one, where I explained that if the good that you want is on a frequency of, let's say, 104.5, right? And you want that good that's playing on 104.5, that's located on 104.5, but you're residing on 99.9, .9, well, you can never have what's on 104.5. It's physically impossible. It doesn't exist in the universe. It doesn't work like that. What does work in the universe is if you want what's happening on 104.5, you can tune yourself to a higher level. You can change the dial. How do you do that? You do that with your mind. You decide on what you want whether it's a better business, more clients, more steady leads, better interaction with your employees, employers, fellow workers. You make a decision whether you want to live in a healthy body until God willing 120, or do you want to live in a struggling, sick, you know, hurting body, which you can create by wrong foods, which you can create by wrong thoughts. You think wrong thoughts, it creates wrong feelings. Those wrong feelings vibrate throughout your body and literally decay it. Now imagine you're in a joyful, happy state and you're controlling yourself through your thoughts. Now you can be in charge of what's happening in your day. Now you can be in charge of how you feel. And how you feel creates what you're going to do. And the better you do things, the better things respond in return. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to show you a little bit about what the mind is all about. A little bit of tight quarters here. So I'm trying to make sure you guys can see this. So basically, the reason why I'm going to share this with you and the reason why this was such a great, um, you know, new idea to me is because I finally had an image when somebody was talking to me about the mind. Just like when I you know, somebody asks me, what does my fridge look like? I immediately see my fridge. But when somebody asks me, what does my mind look like? I refer to my brain. But I found out the brain is not the mind. No one's ever seen the mind, which is why nobody can explain what it looks like. Which is why this lesson was the greatest lesson for Bob Proctor and the greatest lesson for me. And once I really understood this, I started connecting it to what's going on in my life. I started connecting it to what happened when I lost my business, what affected that? And more importantly, how am I allowing what was out of my control 
affect the only thing that is in my control, which is my thinking, which is how I'm able to go about my thinking so I can determine what actions I'm going to take and ultimately what reactions will happen in my life and ultimately what results I'm getting in my life. The reason I wasn't getting good results was because I was caught up with all kinds of crappy ass thinking because I was letting the outside control me and I have no idea. I don't know what's going on in my mind. What the hell is a mind? I don't know what's going on in my brain. Why did this happen to me? Why me? Why now? Why how? Right? I let all that go once I understood, once I understood what I'm about to share with you, because I was able to take the awareness of what I learned, be able to step back for a moment, look at the picture instead of being in the picture and say, whoa, damn, hold on a second. What happened to me out there? I can't control. It already happened. But how I'm perceiving what happened and how I'm letting it control my thinking so that it can continue ruining the rest of my life or move away from that and grow in my life. Well, that was in total control of my, my own control. That's why I became in charge of my own happiness. That's why I became in charge of being able to wake up every morning blessed with everything that I have. Be grateful for it. Thank God for it so that he, he or she may deliver more of it to me. That's why I was able to become a better parent, better husband, better son, better brother, better friend to all my friends, better person to people like yourselves, which I'm so humbled and grateful for you being here. I'm hoping that my messaging really does connect with you guys because it is a game changer. It is. I noticed a lot of people are talking about system stuff and, and technical stuff and approach stuff to how you can be successful. Once again, success simply means that every day you get up in a joyful, happy state and you progressively move towards what you decided on and fell in love with the idea and it became your ideal that you're reaching for. It became that delicious, amazing music and sounds on 104.5 and you decided that you're going to work your way up to it. You're going to say, hell no, I'm not staying here on 99.9. Forget this. I'm moving. I'm moving on. I'm going for it. And you're going, going, going and you're moving and now you're successful. But it all starts on the inside first, which is why this entire week is dedicated on you, my friend, and inside first. What is going on inside? How are you feeling inside? How are you thinking inside? But in order to you, for you to truly place that into your life, you need to understand what the mind is all about. So once again, going back to it, the mind, in 1934, a doctor named Thurman Fleet from Texas, he was a holistic doctor and he understood that no one has ever seen the mind, right? Because it's not a physical thing. But yet to be a holistic doctor, which he was, how can you heal the whole person holistically if they only see the body, which is what's in front of them in the mirror, but they don't really know what the mind is. And we can't work on the mind as well as the body unless they have an image, unless they understand what we're talking about. So he drew this picture and he basically drew a large circle, a small circle. And he called this the mind. This is the mind. And this he called the body. Right? Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I mean, looks like a cool little grade two <laughs> little drawing. When I first saw it, I was like, interesting. Okay, what is this? silliness about but it's not silly it's not because you start to understand it you start to understand because now you have an image for what the mind looks like right at least something to reference to now what he did is he actually split the top circle in half and he called this the conscious mind and this he called the subconscious mind right And what he started to relate to people and why this became such an incredible, incredible lesson and something to work with is because 
we started to understand, first of all, an image for the mind. Second of all, we started to understand the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and how they operate. You see, you come from infinite. Right? The infinite. Now, most people, when you ask them what is infinite, they say no, no end. Um, goes on forever. I've heard all those. The true definition is there is no beginning and there is no end. That's what infinite actually means. There's no beginning, no end. You, my friend, are infinite. I am infinite. All energy source is infinite. It never dies. It never starts. It just goes on and on on to itself nonstop. Why am I bringing that up? This part of you, the subconscious mind of you, is infinite. It's directly connected to source. Which means, on your conscious mind, your conscious mind is the aware part of you. It's the part of you that's listening to me right now and digesting the information that I'm saying right now. So as you understand what Ellie is talking about, you're taking it into your conscious mind. And with enough repetition, with enough practice, you can take this information and place it in your subconscious mind. Because they work very differently from one another. But because the subconscious mind is connected to the infinite, anything you want to achieve in your life, you can once this guy buys into it. Now, how does that work? You see, connected to your conscious mind is like little antennas, right? And they basically, they're like little antennas. And they're, they're your sensory factors. Like you can see, you can see, you can smell, you can taste, you can touch, and you can hear, right? So, see, smell, taste, touch, and hear. You hear something outside of you, it comes into here as a message, right? It comes in as a message. That message plays in your head. If you don't like what you heard, it's going to affect your happiness. If you don't like what you see, it's going to affect your happiness. If you don't like the smell or the touch, the feeling of what's going on because of your surroundings, it's going to affect your happiness. If you live by the sensors only, you're letting everything outside of you control your thinking. That's where the problem comes in. You see, these are great because these allow us to connect to the world around us. So we're able to actually experience what's happening in the outside world. I'm able to look and with my eyes, I'm able to see the camera. I'm able to see the screen that I'm on with my smell uh, factor, my hearing factor. I'm able to hear when I hear things. But if it's something good that I saw or heard, I'm going to have a good thought about it. If it's something bad that I saw or heard, I'm going to have a bad feeling about it. And all of a sudden, my happiness starts going like this based on what's happening outside of me. We already covered that in the first two days, so we're trying to eliminate that. This is the lesson that's going to show you how to do that. Inside here, you also have six higher faculties, right? The problem is I don't have too much room to write on this, but they're basically your intuition... Intuition, I hope you guys can see that, right? It's your perception. It's your reason. Your memory. Your will. Perception, reason, and your imagination. Imagination. Please excuse the chicken scratch. <laughs> I, I was set up for doing this a whole other way. I was going to do it with slides and everything. I can't seem to share my screen and my face at the same time with, with, with live, with Facebook Live. So we're going to have to make do. Please put in a message in the comments if you can see this, if you're following with me and what I'm saying. I'm just going to give that a second. 
if you guys are able to see this and it's making sense. I'll explain all this. You don't have to really kind of memorize it. Plus, it's in the, it's in the implementation guide. So the idea is like this. Because you have these higher faculties, because you're able to imagine things in your mind. Iris, awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Um, because you're able to imagine things in your life, you can decide with your imagination what you want to create on that frequency that I was talking about, right? The moment you decide that you want something using your imagination, because you don't have to live anymore by just what you see outside. You now know that you have all these. Unfortunately, we don't learn about this in school. And fortunately, there are people in the world who do explain this type of stuff. This is why I wanted to share it with you guys, because once it was explained to me, I mean, damn, all I wanted to do was share it and teach it to others, right? Because if it makes all the difference in my life, why wouldn't I want it to make a difference in everyone else's life? Like my friends, my family, my relatives, you know, my, my peers, my clients, my everyone, everyone, everyone alive and walking on this planet, this beautiful 4.6 billion year old planet where we think that our little world with all our problems on our sensory factors that are controlling our happiness is a big deal. Time to wake up, guys. Time to wake up. Humankind is only 60,000 years old, yet we exist on a 4.6 billion year old planet just do a little bit of math on that understand that you know understand how insignificant your little nothingnesses are yet you're allowing them to control your happiness the one and only reason we exist in this life and the only reason we do anything in this life is for happiness <laughs> right that's why i wanted to speak to you about happiness and joy it's the only reason we do anything. You meet a person because you're hoping that with them you can establish a life and be happy. You get up in the morning because you're going about your business to be happy. You buy things because you believe they're going to make you happy. You experience life because you're looking for happiness. You start a business and serve clients because you want money, but at the end of the day, it's because you're seeking happiness. So everything we do is about happiness. Success is progressively moving daily in a happy state towards what you want. So what do you want? Use your imagination. Can you imagine building a picture where everything is just working out perfectly in your life? Where you're living in a beautiful, healthy body that every cell works in complete harmony with one another? So there is no such thing as cancerous cells. You're breathing because the breath in you fixes everything. You're drinking water because you understand you're 60 to 70% water. You're starting to get the picture of where you can go in your imagination, what kind of life you can build for yourself. Who sold you that bullshit that the way it is not right now is the way it's supposed to be and that you're destined to stay that way? Who, who programmed that silliness in you? And guess where that program lies? That program, actually, I'm glad I brought that up, sits right here. Right here. You know how they say, think outside the box? <laughs> this is what they mean. This is the box. This is, this is your box. And it's pre-programmed with a bunch of silliness. It's a bunch of silliness that was passed on from generations. Great, great grandma, passed it on to great grandma, passed it on to grandma, passed it on to mom. Thanks to the, my, their loving care, they did it in all good intentions, passed it on to moi. And if I don't make a difference, I'm going to pass it on to my kids. But I choose not to because I understand what's going on here. And I'm choosing to use my imagination to build a better version of myself so I can build a better life for myself. And I choose through my imagination to be happy no matter what. Then I use my willpower. Your willpower gives you the ability like a laser focus to stay completely focused on what you want. So if you combine the two, you build an image for what you want in your life and then you use your will to stay focused on that. You got some good ease going on there. All of a sudden your happiness is not dependent on what the sensory factors are telling you. 
or what happened outside or what he did, she did, he said, they said, who cares? Who cares? You're living in your inner world. You're creating your imaginary good. You're using your willpower to block all the BS out. Corona? Great. Fine. So what? I still want to build my life the way I want, not the way the government tells me, not the way the politicians are trying to sell me, not the way the media is trying to control my thinking. I don't give a shit about that. I give a crap about what I want. What do I want? That's a good place to start with the question of what do you want? Right? So if you know what makes you happy, if you know what, what joy you're seeking inside to unveil that to the world, then you can build a beautiful image with your imagination. And then you can use your willpower to block all that noise out and stay focused only on what you want. Take it a step further. That box of yours, we refer to it as paradigms. What it is is habits, just habits. It's your belief system. It's what you believe is true. What is true? Well, the only thing that is true is that you're an infinite being, that you're here for a very short time in a physical body, and that you have a mind. That's the only truth there is. Other than that, everything else is a figment of your imagination. Because what you have in your life today, your house, your friends, your relationships, your business, your job, your clients, your money, everything is a result of your thinking. So it is an imaginary thing. So you might as well use your one factor that was given to you, the higher faculties, the six higher faculties, to create a new image of what you want. So you can actually see it come to life in your reality. I hope this is starting to make sense. Check out the other ones you can combine. Your reasoning, your reasoning gives you the ability to think. Now, based on your imagination, you can create the good that you want. With your willpower, you can stay focused on that. With your reasoning factor that your ability to think, you're able to think of what you're going towards and you can reason with it is this gonna do what I wanted to do to better my chances of getting to the life I designed in my imagination or is it gonna take me further away from it is the action I'm gonna take today gonna me move me closer to my goal or keep me further away from my goal that's where reasoning comes in that's where thinking comes in when you're in a happy, joyous state, like I've discovered after what happened to me and thanks to this information, I'm able to think differently. I'm able to look at the other side of the coin when I don't like what I see on, the, on one side. I'm able to think, hold on a second, is what I'm going to do right now going to bring me closer to my goal today and going to help me achieve what I want or is it going to keep me further away from it? Is what I'm putting in my mouth right now going to hurt me or help me be in the best shape of my life? Is what I'm about to do with my body going to better me or is it going to make it worse so that my well-being gets affected? Is what I'm about to say to the other person going to improve this relationship or going to wreck this relationship? Isn't it interesting to start thinking that way? That's your reasoning factor. That's the power you've been given in your mind. Reasoning is also a good way to combine with intuition. Because once you know what you want, and once you stay laser focused on it and eliminate all the outside BS, your intuition starts guiding you. Like if you're... I'll refer this to health because everyone else refers it only on money and success. So I'm going to step away from that just for a second and I'll relate it to that as well. But I want you to think of your health because if you don't have your health, what do you truly have in your life? Go talk to a millionaire sick person and see how happy they are that they have money. Go talk to a millionaire person who has a hard time moving or breathing and ask them how happy they are that they have the money. That they're spending on their health. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, do that. And you'll see what the answer is. So health first, everything else after. Let's say you decide 
to get into the best shape of your life and you build that image, you see yourself living in the most amazing body that nature can create, that God created and gave you the machine to live through an amazing journey with the power of the mind to do anything you want, to create joy and happiness in everything you do. You use your willpower to stay focused on that and only that because nothing else matters. Then you start to think of what can help you live that kind of life and you start moving that way because you're progressively moving in a happy state towards your worthy ideal. Your intuition starts guiding you. Your intuition is that silent whisper that when you go to reach for that cake, says, hey, come on, man. Ellie, you've been trying so hard. You've been doing so well. You've been working out. You've been watching what you're eating. You've been drinking water. Man, you're healthier at the age of 50 than, than, than most 20-year-olds. Why would you eat that? Let's not, let's, you know what? Let's not eat that cake because tomorrow is celebratory day and tomorrow you can have a piece because you you've been a good boy. That's your intuition guiding you because your intuition starts showing you ways to get to what you want and talks to your reasoning. That's why these two are a good combination together. These two, right? And these two are a good combination together because your intuition guides your thinking, not the outside, not the news, not the politics, not the media, not the, but I don't even know what to call them anymore. I'm tired of everything that's going on out there. No, your intuition is a signal from the infinite that guides your thinking so that you can move towards what the imagined good is and be able to stay focused on it through your will. Let's talk about business since everybody always talks about only money and success. Imagine you built an empire in your imagination. Financial abundance, time, freedom, complete peace of mind, easy flow of leads and clients, abundant connection to people, never having to worry about anything, earning more money while you're sleeping than you can spend while you're awake. That's a pretty good image to build with your imagination. And let's say we start focusing on that with our will. We don't look at the fact that Corona might be affecting business. We don't listen to the news with our hearing factor, right? We don't worry about what's going on outside. We just stay focused on that amazing, amazing imagined good that we want, like the business, the time freedom, the financial abundance, being able to buy what you want because you think it'll make you happier, right? But if you're happy, you don't need it. You just buy it because it just feels nice. But it's not to make you happy. It just feels good. And then you're able to share more with others. And then you're able to give more to others. Start foundations, build empires, build schools, do whatever you want. You can use that with your imagination. It costs you this much to use it. It could cost you a billion dollars not to use it. So you stay focused on the business that you want. Then you start thinking how can I get to that business? What first step can I take? And then you move into action. Because your conscious thinking controls how you're going to feel. And your feeling controls this. So idea here, right? The idea that you come up with, with your imagination, right? With your imagination, you come up with an idea. With your will, you stay focused on that idea and you start thinking only about that idea. Only, only, only. Nothing else matters. You're just thinking about that idea over and over again. And what happens is that idea takes place in your subconscious mind. And it becomes a habitual way of doing things. It becomes your new belief system. It's the autopilot that eliminates the box and starts moving into action because the subconscious mind is connected to infinite and it starts drawing from the infinite the ways of how to do it through your intuition and you start getting guided ideas that move your body into action 
And when your body moves into action, right, your body moves into action, which automatically causes a reaction in the physical world because cause and effect. Action has to have a reaction. That reaction creates your result, the result that you want in your life, whether it's the financial abundance and freedom, whether it's the best health of your life and the body you want to create, or whether it's the relationships you want to create in your life, like abundant friends all over the world, clients, infinite amount of leads, business partnerships all over the world. Your results are determined by the actions that you take. Your actions are determined by the thoughts that you create, which ultimately creates the feelings that you create which dictates what actions the body is going to move into. So if you start with a happy thought here, if you're happy here, happy, right? And you have a positive vibration to you all day long and you're caught up with positive ideas, thanks to your imagination and your will, you start moving your body in a positive vibration and you create positive action and you create positive results in your life. Now is the silly stick person a silly idea or is it starting to make a little bit of sense? Please drop a comment if you're here with me or if you watch this, let me know. Is it making sense? Are you guys able to see this and, and kind of understand what this is going on here? Because once you understand how your conscious thinking and your state of happiness can determine what's going on on the feeling end of you, which is your subconscious mind, Hey, Sumana, how are you? Right? You're able to take that feeling and transcend it through your body, through your physical body, to create the action and make the results you want. Now, let's go back to the last two. The last two are also grouped together, which is your perception and your memory. Your perceptions... Perception is how you see things. It's how you perceive things to be. Your perception is determined by the memories that you have built. So what happens is, if you have a certain memory in that box that we crossed out, inside your box you have a certain memory, what happens is, when you see a situation in your life, your perception of that situation goes back to your memories and starts referring. Did this ever happen in our life? Let's go see what happened last time this happened in my life. And it's always referring back. That's what the mind does. It always goes back. It's like a filing cabinet. It opens the filing cabinet and goes, da -da -da -da. oh, there you go. This is a reference. Oh, remember when you tried that business 10 years ago? You remember what happened to that business? Don't you remember how much money was involved and how much we lost or the business didn't do this or they did, did that? And remember when you tried to go on a diet before? Don't you remember you went, you went and did this diet and that diet and you tried to get in the best shape but you couldn't? And don't you remember we keep failing? That's all the bullshit caught up in your box there. Because that's the program you've been given. That's, the, that's what's controlling you. And because it's controlling you, it's determining whether you're happy today or not because it's relying on your memories from before. And they're controlling your perception, how you see things. But we can change that when we make a decision because we decided on something we want. We used our imagination. We agreed and made a decision that we're going to progressively move towards the realization of it. And we're going to stay focused through our willpower. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reason out what is good for us and what is not. We're going to listen to our intuition, not our hearing. And let that guide us into taking action towards the result that we ultimately want. On top of that, we're gonna reason, uh, we're gonna perceive things a little differently. Because for the person who lost his business thanks to Corona, according to his perception of reality, 
the world really sucks big time because he lost his restaurant and everything got shut down and his entire chain of income stopped. But the person who's in PPE product, which is personal protection equipment or masks or gloves or anything to do with Corona that is on a positive end, his perception is, Corona is the greatest thing that ever happened. If the person is online with Shopify or with Amazon, and if the person has their money invested in Shopify or Amazon, sees Corona, perceives Corona as the greatest thing that ever happened to him or her, right? So it's a matter of how you perceive things. Is your reality really as bad as you make it seem? Really? Is it? You're here for God bless 120 years on a 4.6 billion year old planet. You're here for such a short time that one grain of sand in the entire amount of sand on the face of the earth is not even enough to give you a ratio of how insignificantly small that time period is. So is your perception of what's going on in your world really that bad? Or can you seek the happiness and joy inside of you and turn the table on that and get out of your box and start to imagine the things that you want. Start to build the image of what you want. Start to stay focused on it. Use these gifts that you've been blessed with. They're yours. Each of us has them. You, my friend, have these. You just haven't been explained this way on how to use them. You had no idea what the mind looked like and how it functioned. This has the ability to choose, to accept or reject any information, even the one that I'm sharing with you today, and is able to originate ideas. This part of you, the infinite part of you, has no ability to choose, cannot reject any information. It simply accepts what is given. But the beautiful part about it is this guy does not know the difference between what's real or what's imagined. Between what you see, hear, smell, taste, touch, or imagine. Isn't that amazing? You can trick your subconscious mind into buying any idea that you create. And through repetition of that idea, not these, you create that in here. And as soon as it's accepted by your subconscious mind, BAM! It's controlling the vibration you're in. And now you're no longer a 99.9. .9. You just up the game to 104.5. And BOOM! The action you take because you're in such a wonderful vibration and so happy internally and so grateful, you start to move into proper action. You start to perceive things a little differently and you start to build new memories and new files in that filing cabinet and finally get rid of those old files so you no longer reference the bullshit that you thought was so important in your life and you create brand new life memories happiness joy abundance prosperity health relationships whatever you want I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope you're still with me. Drop a yes or a no if, you, if this makes sense to you. Drop a yes or a no if this information is as sweet and delicious as I found it to be once I truly understood this. Now keep in mind, guys, I covered this in 40 minutes today. One time you see this. I've studied this for 15 years. My mentor Bob Proctor studied this for 60 years made a huge difference in his life it's revolutionized my life and my thinking so imagine what it can do to you or for you when you truly start to understand this but i'm sorry to say you're not going to pick it up and just go with it because you saw it one time there's a process involved in doing this and that process i'd be happy to share with you that process is through continually getting involved with the right information so you can stop listening to the news. So you can stop living by your sensory factors and start controlling your life by design, 
not by default. So I hope this has been really, really helpful. I hope it's been informative. I tried to make it not such a teaching thing, but I just, it's so passionate in this. Like I have to show it to you guys. I have to relate this to your happiness and joy, which I want you to experience every single day of your life, no matter what's going on out there, no matter what's happening in your life right now. Everything that you have in your life right now, good or bad, is simply a result of what was caught up in your thinking or in your programming from before. For all you know, you activated something, a reality that you pictured five years ago and now it's showing up in your life. It's not because you did something today. No, 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 no. It's here today because you did something five years ago, a month ago, a week ago. There's no telling when that idea hit you and then it slowly started progressively moving towards that idea. That's the furthest thing from success. I mean, the fact that it manifested in your life is success in itself, which means it actually came true. But is it what you wanted? Was it by design? Let me know. Put a one if you're actually experiencing everything you thought you would want or have. Or a two if you think you can do a little bit better by implementing some of what we talked about today. Let me see how many are still with me. <laughs> Say hello, guys. Put a comment. Put a one if yes, everything I have now is perfect and it's exactly what I thought a while back and I created it. Or two, I can definitely put this information to use and make it better. Don't be shy. Don't worry about it. It's, it's for you. I'm just curious. You can always do better. Doesn't matter what you have in your life. Doesn't matter how far you are in your life. You can always do better. And the way to do better, to have better, to be more is to implement some of this kind of stuff is to implement the thinking and the ideas that we're sharing during these these live calls. If you haven't done so, so far, I would highly recommend go get the implementation um, guide and go through some of the questions that I put in there. And this lesson is in more details in the implementation guide. So I hope this has been great. I thank you very much as always. Thank you for coming and sharing your time with me. Um, leave me your comments, whether you're watching the recording of this, drop some comments, let me know where you're at, what is going on, is this information helpful? Do you want me to get into more depth on it? And then I'll see you guys tomorrow where I have another amazing, amazing thing I wanna cover and explain to you guys. And tomorrow I'm gonna to make a special offer for you uh, for anybody who's interested in diving deeper into this and truly gaining the understanding of this, you know, um, so definitely come and tune in tomorrow. Let your friends know, let anybody know that you think this can help them in their life. Please invite them into the group and let them know that I'll be live tomorrow at 12. All these recordings are in the units now. And I'm going to upload this one as well. So you're able to see every day what we've done. I'm even putting in the, some of the exercises from the implementation guide. So please go ahead and see those. Please pass this on and share it with others. Anybody who can use some help in their life in any area, such as their health, relationship or finance, I would be happy to speak to them, to share some information with them, to dive deeper into what I covered today with them and you. So thank you once again. Have a blessed and wonderful afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you're joining me from. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>